Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over this UFC Saudi Arabia card from a contrarian betting perspective. And basically what we do in these videos is identify where the narrative is. Identify where, you know, MMA Twitter has kind of, you know, agreed upon as far as what, what result is, is just kind of preordained. And I say that half sarcastically, but as I've discussed in these videos many, many times, UFC is a sport particularly suited to human beings just kind of group thinking their way to a very binary outcome. What does that mean? Um, well, sometimes there is going to be such an overwhelming majority of, of, of betters and sharps or whatever that are on one side that you can know that that one side is completely overvalued. Um, the other thing is that UFC is so, I don't know, it's so prop driven People, it's not enough for people to figure out, you know, who's going to win. They want to figure out how soon, by what method, what round or whatever. So human beings just kind of develop this, this story about how a fight is going to go. And it usually settles on one of two things, either A wins in this manner or B wins in that manner. And what happens is, is those particular results, which are probably the most likely results to come in, are certainly going to be the most overvalued okay because that's just the way it works i mean people they 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 say okay i think this is going to happen oh that makes sense and then people hear more and more and more of it and then they just agree on it that either a is going to win by knockout in the first round or b is going to not get a win by decision in the third round and while those might be the most likely results um it, it's been my experience that those are the results or those are the props or those are the predictions that are most overvalued by the public um, are most overvalued. So the idea is that if we can identify what is the result that I can explain to my five-year-old, uh, so to speak, I don't have a five-year-old, five -year but if there is a result that you can explain really easily to someone, then that's the result that you can throw out, okay? And essentially, if we can throw out one or two, you know, overvalued results, then depending on the VIG, you can almost throw darts at the rest and have good value. Now, it's not that easy. Um, you want to be able to at least come up with something that has a chance, okay? And there is a VIG to overcome, but I feel as though taking this approach to, I mean, all wagering really is, 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 a, is a better proposition than just trying to outgrind the models. Um, um, but in UFC specifically, uh, it, it's particularly suited to that. And I really enjoy putting that to the test in these videos. And, and the goal, again, in these videos is not necessarily to, you know, to teach you how to bet MMA, because that's not even relevant. Uh, I mean, it's relevant, but the, the, the bigger picture is to figure out how to be contrarian, how to, you know, how to identify where the public is and to realize that if all the public is agreeing on something, I'm not saying they're wrong, but I'm saying that the line is certainly well, very healthy, uh, if not completely overvalued towards that. So let's take a look at all these fights and let's go over the rules. Uh, rule one is we are going to bet one thing each and every fight, and that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Second of all, we're going to be betting one unit on every fight, and that is not the best money management system in the world either, but we don't care. And for us, one unit is always, well, I say always, but maybe we'll up it up one day, uh, is $180, uh, 10 times high, good luck, no other reason. It's not 0.026% Kelly or anything like that. This is not a, a bankroll uh, a bankroll show. Um, we're just going to bet one thing, same amount every fight. And again, I, I do think it's healthy for someone if they're going to recommend something to put an actual dollar if, on it if they're going to be actually betting it. And this unit thing, I, listen, I know that people have different bankrolls and, and it's become kind of customary for people to say, how many units they're betting, but I don't know. I just think it's healthy if someone's going to going to recommend something and they're going to put their own money on it. I'm going to tell you exactly how much they're putting. Out. That's that's my thought. The other thing is that to keep this fun, uh, we have an 11 fight card, and we are going to assume that the first 10 bets we're going to lose, and as a result, the main event we are always have to, we always have to bet something that is going to get all of our money back from the previous 10 fights, um, and. This, this this main event, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing already. If you watch the uh, the DFS breakdown from Thursday, I kind of uh, alluded to that, but we'll, we'll get to there. We'll get there.
Um, so again, let's let's take a look. And first fight in the night, we have uh, two Korean fighters or Asian fighters who are coming from the road to the UFC. And, you know, there's not a lot on either of these guys. So I've seen a lot of you know, varying takes. Um, I've heard just as many people on the on the Chang Lee side as the Long Zhao side. At the beginning of the week, I was informed that Zhang uh, Cheng Ho Lee had all the wrestling upside. But as the week went on, you know, more people were, were, were explaining that Chow has good wrestling too. So this is actually probably the one fight where there is really no contrarian take. I mean, everybody's kind of on both sides of it. So if there were a fight that I was going to pass from a contrarian perspective, this one would probably be it. And maybe I'll start doing that. Maybe I will start um, passing. Uh, that's but who, What fun is that? What fun is passing? Uh, anyway, so I guess for no other reason, I was going to just take the underdog here, but there's no underdog. It's minus 112, minus 108. Um, I, I guess the thing that people are not expecting too much is for this fight to finish. So for lack of anything else, we're just going to bet the fight to, you know, to finish inside the distance. So let's just take a look. Um, fight lines, uh, just fight props. Fight not to go the distance plus 170. And we'll play that for 180. All right. So we have uh, Magomed Gaggio, whatever his name is. <laughs> Sorry about this. Against Brenson Ribeiro. And this is essentially, everybody's kind of agreed that, you know, that Magomed is probably going to take him out. Uh, and his only path to losing is maybe Ribeiro gets kind of a late. I mean, kind of an early knockout. So anything really with this fight finishing early is probably overvalued, even from both sides. So either the under minus one and a half or something's going to be overvalued. Anything with Gajiev, uh, excuse me, Gajulov early is going to be overvalued. And even the Ribeiro KO early is probably going to be overvalued as well. So the only thing we can really bet is something that, 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 that goes late. So, which means that I can either get really fancy and play Magomed round two or round three or something like that, or just play him by decision. So let's just take a look and see what some of these odds are. Um, okay, Magomed by decision plus 700. I mean, that's that's totally reasonable. Um, all the other guy do is has to do is survive for three rounds and, uh, and we get paid pretty much. So I'm kind of down with that. Okay, moving on, we have... Uh, Muin Gafara versus Kun Yo Kang. Now, this is so strange. You know, Kun Yo Kang, he's, his nickname is Mr. Perfect. And I almost want to say that the nickname is getting him some, some, some love here in the betting streets because it's really strange. You have Gafara at minus 155, and yet you're getting about 90% participation on the, Kyo, uh, on the uh, Mr. Perfect side. I mean, and we talk about this almost every week. Whenever you have a card, the the people always try to look for that underdog to play. Okay, even if there's no good underdog, they try to find that underdog to play. It turns out that there are probably some other decent underdogs this week to play, but you have to be very suspicious of these kind of mid-range underdogs. They usually, I mean, usually, I have no data to back it up, but it seems as though they end up underperforming. Okay, it seems as though they end up overvalued. And this week, it's just all I've heard is Mr. Perfect literally all week long. And yet still, um, Gafarov is minus 155. So in a weird way, we are going to be contrarian here and, and go with Gafarov minus the 155. Again, nothing, you know, nothing particularly, you know, earth shattering or anything like that. But uh, I think this is the side. I'm moving on. We have uh, Renat Fakwadinov versus Nicholas Dalby. All right, so this is very subtle, but I, I bring this up uh, pretty much every week with one with a, for a couple of fights. If you want to get a job in my hedge fund, and you can't, okay, I'm not hiring anybody. I don't have, haven't hired anybody in forever. But to to illustrate a point, if you want to get a job being contrarian for me, don't bring a resume to me that tells me that you bet Nicholas Dalby in round three in this particular uh, in this particular fight. Or Nicholas Dalby late, Nicholas Dalby round two, anything like that. Because that, even though it's 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 a it's a 
kind of like a high odds bet here. It's just the ultimate moto play. I mean, like, this is what happened. I mean, Adalby in his last fight was getting beat up, and then he came back, and he got that cardio edge, and he got, you know, Bonfim out in the third round. And it's just, this has been the talking point this whole week, is that either Fak Radinov gets him out of there early, or he gasses, and Dalby can take over late. So the ultra, you know, to turn a phrase, hipster play of the week is going to be Dalby late. So that is the, in a weird way, that is something you can't do. All right. That is hopelessly overvalued, in my opinion. And, and you should fade that. Um, so all you can really bet here, okay, you can't really bet Frack Radinov early or a Dalby late. So if you want, if you want to be psycho, you can play Dalby early. But I think what's what's more uh what's what's better is to play Fack Radinov something late. So that would be either like round three, if you wanted to, you know, take some big odds, or just by decision. So let's take a look at some of these odds here. Um, back with, you know, that by decision is, my, by decision is minus 110. That does not look particularly juicy, to say the least here. Um, what about round three? Let's take a look at this. Uh, round props. Even round two. Fact with, you know, round two is plus 650. All right, that, that, that looks reasonable. So Fakradinov, round two, plus 650 for one. All right, Mohamed Naimov versus Philippe Lima. So this was this was trending to be the the the, the big popular underdog of the week. Um, everybody was all over Lima here. Um, but I think as the week went on, people kind of respected the the uh, you know the Naimov side here. Um, and so there's equal amount on both sides. Um, so as far as being contrarian, you really can't do too much here. So I'm I'm going to give you something else here that I know is not that I know is uh is not overvalued. Okay, I'm I'm going to do it. Uh, it seems so freaking obvious, but whatever. Naimov essentially in his last two in his last fight like cheated to no end. Okay. Grabbed the cage a couple of times against what's his name? Against uh uh Nathaniel Wood. I think even his fight before that, he was kind of cheating a little bit and he didn't get any points taken away. Well, I'll say this if he does it again and he gets points taken away, you know what is in, in play here? Is is draw at plus fifty k, um, so plus five k. So we're we're going to do that. <laughs> we're going to play draw plus fifty to one at one eighty. So there's two ways that could happen. Number one is you get like a point taken away, and there is there are other variations. You know, like if if Namov gets a a twenty eighteen or excuse me a ten eight or Lima gets a ten eight and then it goes ten nine ten nine the other way. That's certainly in the cards also. So we're going to try this. Um, is uh, Namov and Lima for draw for plus uh, plus 5,000. All right, moving on. Nasrat Hakbaras versus Jared Gordon. All right, uh, Hasbaras, Hakbaras, uh, definitely the better volume striker. And Jared Gordon might have some wrestling upside. I haven't really seen anybody pull the trigger on the Gordon side. You're really getting most of the action on on, on Hackbarass, basically saying he's going to win a decision, kind of you know, just kind of either volume or just be technical or whatever. And people are always are rooting for Gordon here because, listen, he got uh, robbed by Patty Pimlet, uh, and everybody just loves his story. But I haven't seen anybody actually pull the trigger on him. So we're, we're going to be that contrarian. We will actually play Jared Gordon plus the 195 for 180. Okay, Johnny Walker versus Volkan Ozdemir. Um, all right, so I, I, I alluded to this one, what I was going to do earlier on Thursday. And again, this is not what I usually do. I actually do have sort of a take here. But the reality is, is that people are going to, you know, are expecting kind of a banger, the, 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 the uh, one and a half, under is, is it's, it's, uh, you know, people are, are hitting the, the under one and a half. Johnny Walker is, is, is a finisher 
And Ozdemir, he in his last fight, I think he got a quick finish also, and these guys are going to go at it. But I, I, ju I just feel as though this fight is just going to go the distance. I, I think that Johnny Walker showed in this Anthony Smith fight that he could actually be smart about things. Um, so we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to go with either this fight to go the distance or somebody by decision. Um, so let's take a look at what some of these odds are. Walker by decision is plus 400. Ozdemir by decision is also plus 400. So I like the Walker side here anyway. So we'll play Walker by decision plus 400 for 180. Okay, replacement fight. Shara Magomedov versus Antonio Tricoli. Let's see if they even have odds up here. Wow, they actually did get um they actually did get props up here. Um and and Shara was, you know, he was going to be a pretty big favorite anyway against his previous opponent who dropped out a couple of days ago, Antonio Chicoli, who hasn't fought in like 12 years, I guess, or whatever in the UFC. He, he's coming in on short notice, I, I guess, to take a beating. Um, so there's there's a couple of there's, – there's one thing that you can bet here, and, and you're not going to like it, okay? But I'm just going to say it anyway. So – Magomedov, in his last fight against Bruno Silva, um, he ended up uh, he 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 won, but he got taken down quite a bit. He was very active off his back, to say the least. Um, but people are saying that he's got no ground here, and so what people are doing, they're going to be betting Magomedov either by KO or nothing, pretty much. So nothing, you can't really bet Maga Madoff by KO here in any round. So the only things you can do, boy, I don't think you're going to like this one, but it's one of two things. What's Maga Madoff, first of all, by decision? Maga Madoff by decision is plus 380. But what is he by submission? Yeah, I figured, plus 700. And that really is the, you know, the, the contrarian play, right? The Maga Madoff by sub at plus 700, the idea that he's just so bad on the ground that he's got to work on his takedown defense. I mean, I don't know. If he's such a huge favorite, I imagine he can win however he wanted. And I just kind of see these weird variations where he just kind of gets the sub. So I don't know. We're going to try it. Mega made up by sub, plus 700. I knew you guys wouldn't, aren't going to like it, but hey, this is the United States. You don't have to bet it if you don't want to, right? All right, Kevin Gastelum versus Daniel Rodriguez. Uh, this fight is pretty much a shit show. I mean, you have, you have Kevin Gastelum couldn't even couldn't make 170. Knew couldn't knew he couldn't make 170, so he made it kind of at 180, and then he still came in overweight. I mean, he looks terrible. I don't say he looks terrible. He just looks big. And then you have Daniel Rodriguez, who you know, who's like what's he 38, 39. So this is kind of looked at as a kind of a uh, kind of a boring fight. And as a result, anybody inside the distance here is probably going to be undervalued. So what does Gastelum look like inside the distance, just for the hell of it? Well, first of all, Gastelum by KO is plus 350, but Gastelum by sub is plus 900. I mean, I I've heard rumors that he can take him, that he can get takedowns here. Let's take a look at some other things. Let's look, let's look at him early. Gastelum round one plus 550. Or he, how about just Gastelum inside the distance? Why are we even getting too fancy? Just plus 250, Gastelum inside. You know, but we're greedy. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to look at his record. And if he has, what do I need? I need a sub victory within the past couple of years. Okay. And if we can get that, we'll take a shot. All right, Gastelum, lost by sub, won by decision, lost by decision, lost by decision, won by decision, lost by sub, decision, decision, decision. Yeah, so he has no subs on his record at all, not since 2014. Um, so that's just not happening. We'll, we'll just play him inside the distance, I guess. But if we did that, why not just play him by KO? Because that's what people are betting, if anything. What is what is Rodriguez inside the distance? Has he has he 
Has he finished anybody recently? Let's see. Decision, decision, KO, decision. Oh my God, another, another just decision, dude. There's a couple of KOs back in a long time ago, I guess. Got a Preston Parsons KO here. And he got subbed by Neil Magny. Yeah, this is kind of a terrible fight. We'll, we'll do, you know what we're going to do? Let's just play the fight doesn't finish. I mean, let's play the fight finishes. Fight does not go the distance. Because that's that's what people are avoiding. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, fight props. Fight does not go the distance. Plus 165. Just in case D-Rod somehow gets them, we'll, we'll have that covered. All right, um, Sergey Pavlovich versus Alexander Volkov. Um, there's been a lot of nonsense, uh, a lot of narrative about um, about Pavlovich uh, and Volkov having trained together, and the the, the narrative because has 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 shifted. At the beginning of the week, people were saying, "Well, maybe it's not going to be as violent a fight because these guys are friends." And then later on in the week, people were saying that Volkov was saying that you know he's kind of afraid of him and doesn't really want to get smacked hard by him. So maybe he'll just stay away from him or something like that. In any case, the, um, in any case, you have Pavlovich, his path to victory, everybody knows is in the first round. And if Volkov survives the first round, Volkov can take over late. So class following along, what are you not allowed to bet? Can't bet Pavlovich early and you can't bet Volkov late or by decision. Okay. So let's see what some of these other lines are. I mean, you can play Volkov round one if you want, or anything with Pavlovich later by decision is totally in play. Let's take a look at some of these. Uh, let's look at, well, you know, let's look at at at, at, at uh, Volkov round one just for funsies, plus 600. Okay. Let's look at some of these others. Pavlovich by decision is plus 600. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty juicy. I have to say that. And he's never he's never made it out of the second round, though. Let's see what the second round looks like. Uh, Pavlovich round two. Let's take a look at that. Pavlovich round two. Is that that's plus 650? Huh. Yeah, let's do this one. Pavlovich round two plus 650 for one. Now again, we probably should just play it by KO because he's never had a submission. What kind of extra juice do you get? Really nothing. Look at this. Pavlovich by KO in round two is only plus 700. And so we'll, just in case, we'll do that. All right. So we have 10, 10 bets here, and they're all going to lose. So we're going to have to come up with something in the main event. But let's let's uh, review the atrocious bets that we've made um, so far. So from the from the, from the the top, we have uh, uh, Lao Zhang versus Chang Ho Li. I'm not sure which which wrestler is going to get it going, but I don't think that many people are betting this fight to finish, so we're going to be on that. Uh, Magomed uh, to win by decision. Uh, again, that's plus 700. That's really juicy, and everybody's really expecting this fight to finish, and people are betting it that way, so this is this is good enough for me. Gafroff, again, this is contrarian but a favorite. I think that Kel Kim Yo Kang is a very, very popular underdog this week, so we're just going to play Ma Ma uh, Gafroff minus 155. Uh, Fakwadinov round two, um, plus 650. Again, people are expecting either either Fakwadinov to get him out of there in round one or probably gas. So hopefully we can, you know, just get him out of there in round two, plus 650. Uh, Neymar versus Philippe Lima. Again, I couldn't find anything contrarian really. So I took this this draw at plus 50 to one. The combination of that, then there might be some residual referee point taking from his Neymar's last fight. Um, plus, there's always the possibility that could have a 10-8 and a couple of 10-9s. Um, the thing is that I know this is not over bet because the, the draw is plus 50 to 1 on all fights. Okay? Um, so this looks, this looks fine to me. Jared Gordon, again, people are rooting for him, but no one's actually had, had it in them to bet him. So we're going to try it at plus the 195. Walker uh, you know, wants to please the fans, but I just think that, that, that he's now that guy 
that's just trying for wins. And and this might be his easiest way to win is maybe get some takedowns or whatever. Um, keep him at range. Plus 400 is good for me by decision. Maga Madoff, uh, boy, oh boy. I, I can tell my grandchildren that I bet a guy with an OV at the end of his name by submission and got seven to one. Uh, he hasn't shown him yet, but I don't know. He's a huge, huge favorite. And I've heard that Chicoli could go for takedowns. And you know what happens when you can go for takedowns? You can get subbed. So uh, plus 700 is good for me. Uh, Gaslam Rodriguez is supposed to be a very boring fight. So we'll just bet this fight to uh, to finish plus 165. Pavlovich either round one or Volkov takes over early. I don't know why we're doing this, but I think we're probably the only one. Pavlovich round two plus 650. So we're going to be 0 for 10. So in the main event, we have to go something that's 10 to 1. And this is this is this is amazing, this main event. I talked about this Thursday, and I already told you guys what I was doing. Not exactly what I'm doing, but what side I'm on. So you have a fight here where you have Robert Whitaker is minus 162 and Ikram is plus 136. And you have the entire civilized world and part, part of the uncivilized world saying that Robert Whitaker is basically a lock. Okay. And and they talk through all this stuff about. Well, maybe Robert Whitaker is chinny and uh, whatever, but I have to go with it. His back class, his 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 technique, uh, whatever it is. And then they talk about Ali Skarov. You know, he was uh, he was even getting pieced up by Phil Hawes before he knocked him out, and that he was preparing for a much weaker opponent. And while he might have some upside, you know what? I just have to play Whitaker for no other reason. I mean, this is this is this is people's logic. Uh, I just have to go with Whitaker. And it's not even as though they're just picking him to win. They're all just picking him minus the 160. It's crazy. So we're, we are going to take the Alice Garrow side. But the fun part is, is we have to do something that's 10 to 1. All right. So um, what we do, what we have to do is kind of reverse engineer this. Now, if we really wanted to be contrary, honestly, we would play Alice Garrow by decision because no one's expecting that. People are expecting that. Either Ali Askarov runs through him and, and gets a you know an early KO or sub or whatever first two rounds, or Whitaker obviously with his back class and five round ability takes over. So Ali Askarov by decision is probably a, 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 you know uber contrarian, but maybe we can get something at ten to one that you don't have to be that that fancy. Let's take a look. Uh, Ali Askarov by decision. Oh my god, we can't even do it. Excellent. So Ali Askarov by decision is only plus seven fifty. So what we have to do is just pick Ali Askarov in, in any of these rounds and uh, just get lucky with the round and or the, the, the method of victory. And basically all of these are good enough. You know, the, the one that I'm really interested in is, is the submission problem, if you want to know the truth. But we're not going to get too fancy. We're just going to take Ali Askarov. Uh, ooh, I was about to say... Let's just see what, what these odds are. I mean, I always care round three is very, it's it's a very nice, easy thing to play. Um, uh, so we can get 12 to one on that. I think that makes sense because again, it's it's also contrarian because people are expecting that if Ali Scarab doesn't get him out of there round one and two, then Whitaker's going to take over. So it's contrarian. It's the odds that we want. So we are in. All right, so we're going to put these bets in as soon as we log off because um can't do it now because DraftKings will yell at me for having Zoom running Well, the way I'm recording. But hopefully this, listen, hopefully this, yes, helped you find some kind of cool things to bet this weekend. But more to the point, helps you kind of just think about wagering kind of a different way. Anyway, uh, that will do it. Good luck, everybody.